Yes, 2023 is a brand new year. And 2022 taught us some very important lessons about taking our health seriously. Dr. Diro Onifade is back and he's here to discuss how to deal with scary or alarming diagnosis from your doctor. Now, uh, the week before, uh, he was here talking about making sure we go over some important health checks. And uh, he and Mike had an interesting conversation. It's great to have you back. Thank you very much. Thank Happy you. Happy New Year. Yeah, same to you. <laughs> Happy New Brand Year. Brand New Year, new goals, new resolutions, and our health has to be right at the top of that list. Very true. Um, so now, people have gone to do the checkups. They've, take, they've had the blood drawn, they've done all the tests and all that. The results come out. And for some reason, you know, as, as a doctor, you've probably had to give scary diagnosis yes, more time. than once. All the time. Now, give us an example of how some people react. Wow. So there are, there are different ways. There are, we've seen different emotions. You know, it's, it's a very emotional thing mm. to get bad news, both from the doctor and the patient side. So the, there's always this state of disbelief and shock anytime people get bad news. Mm. So it's, we've seen all sorts of reactions. Some start crying. Some will just keep quiet. And some will start insulting people, you know? Different ways. We, we are making in different ways. So people take this in different ways. So we've seen also. But as a doctor, what is it you're really expecting that patient to do at that point? You've given them the diagnosis and probably some advice at this point. Yeah. What are you expecting from the patient? Okay, so uh, I will rephrase that question with my answer. Okay. So I'll do it that way. In breaking bad news, because bad diagnosis, bad diagnosis is a bad news. So... In medicine, we call something breaking bad news. It's an act on its own that you have to learn mm. as a doctor. So when you want to break bad news like that, a bad diagnosis to a patient, you, you need to first look at the doctor's side and the patient's side. Okay. The doctor's side is really, really very key. One, the environment where you are going to break that bad news, you have to make sure that it is conducive for the patient. Number one, you have to ask, do you want to be alone while I tell you this? Mm. Or do you want someone to be with you? Okay. That is really, really very key because that is going to determine the reaction of the patient. So you have to set the environment right. Uh, do you want to be in a quiet place? Do you want to come to my office? Because sometimes people just say it in front of everybody. Of course, when you say something in front of everybody, the reaction is different than when you say it when the person would actually prefer to be alone. Okay. So you have to set that scenario very, very right to break that bad news. So when you do that again, then you have to make, do, away with your, do away with your medical jargons. Mm. This is not the time to start speaking high falutin stuff and you have to come down to the patient level. Mm. You have to let the patient know that I have a news for you and it is not good. Mm. You have to be very, very straightforward. Okay. Uh, then culture come into this when you want to break bad news. Like in some country, let's say South Africa, for example, when a doctor wants to break a bad news, they will, not, they will tell you not to say you are sorry because you are not the person that caused this thing. But in our own environment, if you don't say you are sorry, they look at you that you are not passionate, you are not being empathic. So you have to look at where you are to know what you are going to tell this patient. That's at the doctor's side. So now, um, I'm, I'm trying to be on the positive side now that this challenging, b bad news, hopefully because you're a doctor, you found some solutions or at least a pathway to managing the situation. Yeah. And you're about to tell this patient, right? But um, the thing is, I feel like a lot of patients probably don't really hear everything you're saying. So what is the next move yes. from the doctor? Yes, they, they can't hear you at that particular point in time. Imagine you tell someone that you have, you have a stage three or stage four breast cancer. Of course, the person won't hear you at that point in time. Mm. So you, you are the one that now have to like give this information in small, small bouts that this patient can digest. Okay. You first say something, you hold on, look at the reaction for the patient, then say something again. So you have to give it in, we say, molecules of what the patient can digest. So that is only the time this patient can understand what you are saying. Then you don't just keep talking and talking. You have to look, for the look at the response of this patient. Does this patient actually need more information? So there are some people that don't want to know everything. Mm. They just want to know a little bit. And you have already said more than what you are supposed to say. So now we have to switch it around because what we were hoping to get today is what the patient is supposed to do with this information. 
because um, you go away with this information and some people probably ignore it or are in denial or yeah. enter the God forbid phase. Yes, African of phase, yeah. Mm. So what do they, what are they supposed to do? Number one, so you have to seek support. Okay. Very, very important. Seek support from your loved one, seek support from your friend, from the healthcare people that you trust. Okay. Uh, this is not a time that you want to keep it so secret. You are very, we are very, very secretive in this part of the world, but you have to seek support from the people around you. Uh, social media won't cut it. You need true friendship this time around. People that will really, really come around you and support you. That is one. Number two, you have to try to get as much information as you can get about this, your diagnosis. Okay. So you know the treatment options that are available. So ask questions. Mm. Ask your doctor the questions that, okay, this, what are the treatments available? What is it going to cost me? What are the options then? What are the likelihood of me getting out of this? Mm. And they have to tell you the truth. your right to know. Okay. Then aside that, you have to cut down your time on social media because you read all sorts of diagnoses in social media. Are, we call them the social media doctors. Headache will give you like one million courses and most of them are the bad, bad ones. Mm. So when you keep hearing all these things on social media, on Google and all that, or maybe chat GPT and all, you start wondering and you probably die before the death even is going to come. Mm. So you have to cut down your, the time you spend on social media. Okay. Then take time to do the things you love doing. Maybe there are some things you've always wanted to do before that you are not doing. So this is the time for you to start doing them. Wow. If you believe in spirituality, it's your rights. These are the time you can do these things. If you want to go for holidays, it's the time to then take charge of your treatments. You have to try to play a role in that treatment. It is very, very important. So playing a role in that treatment, being intentional, staying offline yeah. and listening to your doctor those are the key nuggets i'm taking from this yes. especially if you have a good doctor like uh, dr Diron here uh, who is able to release this information in little nuggets that uh, patients are able to digest hopefully by god's grace you will not receive any bad news this year mm -hmm. by god's grace and mm -hmm. even if you do you will find a way to manage it uh, with, with, with god's grace <laughs> 2023 will be all about good news